Friday, and, and you'll be more aware of this as, as we go throughout the period today and certainly tomorrow. You're going to have a research planner do for me. Research planner, all that means is it's not like a, uh, it's not a speech planner like you did for your last debate. This is just what are potential bills that you could see yourself proposing for student congress. Your homework assignment for Friday is not going to be due until the end of the class period. On Friday. So it's not something that you're going to have to necessarily come in with. And it's also a Google Doc that you're going to be filling out through, uh, through uh, Google Classroom. So there's not a sheet that you're going to be giving to me. You're just going to be submitting through Google Classroom. Starting tomorrow, laptops are going to be in here pretty much every day. You're going to be grabbing a laptop. Essentially, what's going to be going on is you're prepping, you're researching, you're coming up with some ideas for Student Congress so that um, we have potential bills that we would be taking a look at next week, and we'll be moving forward from, from there. So all this week, primarily after today, you're thinking of ideas, coming up with ideas for, for Student Congress. It's a first come, first serve. So once you know what you want your bill to be, and we'll talk about what they can include, let me know. That way, you know, if Addy goes, has anyone done a bill on so-and-so, then I can go, yep, it's already taken. You want to move on to something else, or no, you should be able to, to move forward with that one. Um, but you're going to be submitting your bills to me no later than this coming Sunday night by 8 o'clock. Uh, you're going to submit your bills to me through Google Classroom. When you come back to school next Wednesday, because you have a four-day week, you're going to have a list, a copy of all the bills, then, and we're going to run through them to make sure we're, we're aware of what they are. Um, we're not starting Student Congress until probably around like the 14th or the 15th of November. So we got some time to kind of set things up and figure out what it is that we're going to be doing. In short, you're coming up with a bill that you want to propose to Congress um, that you're looking to pass. So you could be either creating a law or you could be um, basically changing a law or, or deleting a law. So if something's illegal that you want to delegalize, you'd be able to do that. You can do things on, a, on several levels. You can do school things. So if we're talking about changing the bell schedule, uh, 918 rule uh, questions and laws and amendments and rules and all that kind of stuff, you can certainly do. But you could do something that pertains to school. You could do something that's on a local level, Ross, Westview, Allegheny County, Pittsburgh. You could do state, you can do federal. We're not doing international law, we're not doing global things or anything like that. So Luke can't come up with a bill that we're going to annex Quebec from Canada, and that will now be the 51st state of the United States. We're, we're not going in, into that kind of route. Sorry. If you want to make Puerto Rico a state, you could. That'd be okay, because that's local. That's you know, federal, uh, within our own domain. But we're not going to be changing international boundaries or, or anything along those lines. I hope not anyway. We could separate some stuff. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be possible. Uh, on the front cover of, of your packet, wanted to run through some things here with you to let you know how, how grading is going to work because this is a little bit different. Um, your... You're going to have multiple activities leading up to Student Congress. So you have your uh, parliamentary procedure quiz, which I just mentioned to you that we're going to do for Friday. Your research planner is something that you're going to submit to me by Friday. Um, your five arguments organizer, this you're not going to worry about for now. That's something that we're going to get to later on in next week. You're going to need to have everyone's bills before you're able to submit that. The other thing here that's missing is you also get 10 points for submitting your bill to me. So you're taking a look at 15, 30, 45 points, plus the 10 points for submitting your bill. You actually are accruing 55 points before we actually even get to the speech and all that kind of stuff taking place once Student Congress begins. So doing the legwork leading up to the speech can, can certainly help you out with it. You're also, just like your last speech, you're going to turn into me a uh, research planner, um, or excuse me, a speech planner, and a works cited page. Uh, just like you did for your eloquence speech, you're going to submit one of those to me as well. So that's going to be additional points that's going on before you actually get to your speech. Your actual speech grade is going to be 75 points. However, your student congress grade is going to be out of 100 points. So that 100 is coming from this 75 plus your pro-con speeches and your questions. When we were doing your eloquence speeches, we did kind of like sample questions after people gave their speech. This time, you get graded 
on questions that you ask, how you answer your questions, you also kind of get graded on a little bit, and you also get points for giving pro and con speeches. So Nina presents her bill. Nina probably has no idea what her bill is going to be. No, okay. So Nina gives her bill. We ask questions to Nina. Um, and I'll keep track of it, probably do about three to five minute kind of questions. They're very direct questions. Usually they're questions where you're looking for clarification. Maybe there was a detail that you didn't think was included um, that you wanted to, to understand. But you're, you're asking pretty simple, pretty direct questions about her bill. If Kobe asks a good question, he gets two points. If Kobe asks a bad question, well, actually, if you ask a terrible question, you get any points. If Kobe asks a so so question, he would get one point. <laughs> it's not that he got a one out of two, so he's not getting a 50%, but out of the 25 points that you are trying to accrue, you only got one instead of two. All right? Same thing happens for pro con speeches. So we do some questions. Then, People agree with Nina, so they want to come up and give a pro speech. They can give a short three-minute pro speech. Um, some people disagree with Nina. They can come up and give a short up to three-minute con speech. You can earn one, two, three, or up to four points for your pro and your con speeches. Again, if you give a so-so con speech and get two points, that's not a two out of four, 50% in power school. That just means that you are at two points towards the 25, ultimately, that you are trying to approve. So you're building up a bank of points through pro, con, and questions that you're asking. Um, I do put a limit on the number of questions that you ask. At most, you can ask 10 questions. The reason for that is I don't want Kobe asking 25 mediocre questions, and he's still getting full credit. So if you ask 10 mediocre questions, you would be at 10 points but you would still be able to give your pro and con speeches and earn up to those four points total for it, okay? Uh, there is time limit as to the amount that we do, and we'll go over that kind of stuff here in, in a little bit. But in total, you can actually earn 105 points out of 100 for Student Congress. You get your speech grade, so you could earn 75. I let you earn up to 30 points for your pro and con. So if someone got a perfect 75 out of 75 and you had 30 points um, out of your pro and con speeches, you would be able to get 105 points total. So you give your speech. It's a solid speech, but it's not you know, the greatest speech in the world. Let's say you get an 80%. That would be 60 out of 75 points. What's the highest student congress grade you could still get? You can still get a 90 out of 100 by earning those 30 extra points. You could give a wonderful speech. You could get a 75 out of 75, and if you don't talk after that, your student congress grade is going to be a 75 out of 100. So you're getting three quarters of your grade is dependent upon the actual speech that you give. Um, it's going to be very similar to the eloquent speech that you gave. But then you get points for questions that you ask and for pro-con and all that stuff. One of the main things that the uh, presiding officer is in charge of is, you know, Addy, you may ask your question. Josh, you may ask your question. Just come up, give a pro speech. Um, but they're going to keep track of how many questions, how many speeches each person gives. So if Luke's hand goes up, Tyler's hand goes up, you've asked seven questions, he's asked five questions, you get to ask your question first so that there's balance. So you're not going to have a person with 28 questions and everyone else just has one um, because other people would be getting opportunities first. Same thing with pro-con speeches. If you are absent, you know, and field trips and all that stuff that happened in November and certainly December, this is going to be going into, if you're not here today, you know, there's a band trip or whatever, um, we'll keep going, we'll move on, but that's the day that you don't get to ask questions, you don't get to earn points, you know, towards your total 100. So, if you do have trips or you know about doctor appointments and things like that, um, make sure the days that you're here, you certainly want to keep up with it so that you'll be able to ask your, your questions and get your points. But there are 21 of us. So that means you'll have the opportunity to ask questions and give pro-con speeches for 20 other speeches, not counting your own. The opportunity for you to get those points is certainly going to be there. Probably, yeah. Just because of like Thanksgiving and like short weeks that we have and all that kind of stuff.
You're, we're not going to, I mean, we're going to start getting ready for it, but we're not going to start the speeches until, at the earliest, I would say November the 14th. Um, and then you have like a two-day week before Thanksgiving the following week. Like the 14th is a Wednesday. Uh, oh, we have a two-day week next week. Next week, so you have a three-day week next week, five-day week, two-day week, four-day week, December. For the most part, yes. Um, so what what is going to happen is you will have a copy of everyone's bill. So before student congress begins, we're going to know what what those bills are going to be. Um, for Friday, you're going to do a research planner. So this is like the third sheet in your packet. Um, and again, this is going to be digital. So you're going to submit five possible bills that you want to do. All right? Just with the idea that if you, whatever your first pick and, and Brooke's first pick, maybe they end up being the same. So we want to have some backup bills that we can fall on. Next week, when you guys come back to school on Wednesday, you're going to pick up a packet of everyone's potential bills at this point. This is the one that you have selected. So at that point, while we're going over the bills and reading through them, because we want to make sure we understand what your bill is and Josh's bill and Addie's and Tyler's, um, you'll probably already start thinking about, I like this bill, or I don't like this bill, or I'm not sure, I need to look at this. <coughs> Where I said, uh, we'll get into this later, but one of the homework assignments was a five-argument organizer. We can't do it yet because we don't know what everyone else's bills are. But at that point, you're going to select five bills from the class and let me know at this point are you pro or are you con on it. You're not <laughs> guaranteeing that you're going to pro con those five bills, but at least you have ideas going for it. I would agree that with what you said, most of the pro con speeches tend to be spontaneous because you know Jared is speaking, he says something, you really like it, you decide you want to pro the speech. You're allowed for a pro or a con speech to talk up to three minutes. Um, but most of you will probably be, if it's spontaneous, about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, the ones that you have planned out, you know, that would be a better chance of, of it being three minutes. At most, no bill gets more than three pro or three con speeches. So for whatever reason, Nina's bill is the lightning rod bill, the one that everyone dislikes. There's always one. So Brooke has a con, you have a con, Josh has a con, Addy has a con. All four of you wouldn't be able to go because we've limited to, to three for each one. So you might have something planned out that you do get to give. You might have something planned out that you don't get the opportunity to give just because of numbers. And the same thing with, with the pro speeches. But there's always that one bill. Maybe Nina will put it together. It just gets everyone kicked off. And then we get con speeches all the time. And it's usually something that you have no idea that it's actually going to one year they wanted to get rid of salt, like road salt for winter, and switch to kitty litter and cinders. There was an uprising in C-247 during the second period. I had no idea it was coming. I didn't know people liked their road salt. Wait, who proposed that? We live in Pittsburgh. I can picture him, but I don't remember his name. He sat over there. I don't yeah, remember if it was Josh's seat or Jake's seat, but it was that yes. last day. Wait, what year was this? Oh, it was like six or seven years ago. It was it was a while ago. I just remember I thought, hey, we're going to get through this bill quick. We'll go into the weekend. We'll come back next week. And didn't work out that way for whatever reason. So, you know, that's 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 what happened. All right. Um, so I'm kind of switching back and forth here between a, a couple things. So for the way that this is going to be set up, mentioned to you, you are going to have three different types of speeches that, that you're going to be giving um, or that you're potentially going to be giving. Everyone is going to give an authorship speech. Um, and I have a rubric for the authorship speech in the packet that we'll take a look at. So the authorship speech is the speech that you're going to give that is proposing your bill. You're going to talk for five to seven minutes of uninterrupted time. Five being the minimum amount of time that you would need to receive full credit. I'm not going to let you go more than seven minutes. So we're not having a 13-minute passionate speech about whatever. We're going to limit it to, to seven minutes. 
Think about what we did for your eloquent speech. You did a one minute opening, you did a three minute main argument, you did a two minute rebuttal and closing. You add all those things together, you get six minutes. So if you've already spoken for five to seven minutes, you just did it into three sections, except for Medina. She did one big chunk. Um, but you're basically going to be doing that same thing, just it's not going to be interrupted because you're not debating against anyone, you're just proposing a bill. So you're still going to have you know, some kind of attention-grabbing device, preview your main points, all that kind of stuff for about a minute. You'll have your two to three main points. If you do three main points at a minute per main point, there's your three minutes. And then you're going to have your conclusion. Within your conclusion would be your rebuttal. So while you don't have you know, Ashley arguing against you or you don't have Tyler yelling at you, you could still and still will prevent... Um, present counter arguments for those who may think that or for those who disagree and then you can kind of still do your whole counter argument rebuttal idea. So it'll be built into your speech, it'll be embedded in there with your conclusion, all of that stuff, that'll be your first main 75 points. After you do your main speech, we're going to hold it for about three to four minutes where there'll be the opportunity for people to ask questions. And so some of the questions you might know answers to, some of the questions you might not know answers to, and it's okay to go, I honestly don't know. Um, the, and, and not making, you know, uh, poking fun at Corey for his questions, but I think when you asked a question to someone earlier, I said, we're not going to do questions like that, where don't you think, wouldn't you agree that? Those types of speechifying questions where you're already kind of getting your viewpoint across, we're not going to ask because you'll have the opportunity to do that in pro talks. But points of clarification, situations that maybe weren't covered within the uh, speech, you'll be able to ask direct, direct questions about that. The the only re way that you would generally no, the only way that you would would be if your bill got amended, so there was some kind of change taking place, and you decided that that was a good amendment, and you still would want to advocate for it. But you're not going to come up and go, all right, I didn't finish my speech, so here's a couple more minutes that I want to go over. Nor are you going to give your speech and then sit down and be like, hmm, you guys are right. My bill's stupid. And then give a con speech on your own bill. You're, you're not going to do that. You can, though, ask questions. You give a speech. Mike cons your bill. You could then ask him a question. But it would have to be the same thing where it has to be a direct question. You can't go, well, don't you think that my argument was better than yours when I said, at that point, you're, you're doing a whole speech of fine thing. Um, but you can give up to three minutes. So um, if, if you have a prepared speech or you just have, you know, you're, you're doing a speech on the whim, but it, you just kind of keep going, you speak your full, full three minutes, you're done, you sit down. Mike cons your bill. Mike speaks for a minute and a half. He would have to stay up here for up to a minute and a half for us to ask him questions. So there will be situations where a um, person could be conning your speech. You are getting really mad at them, and you have this perfect question that is going to make them look like a total nitwit, but they speak for three minutes. You don't get to ask the question because they use up their time. But if they speak for a minute, then they could be up there for two minutes and we could be asking them questions. Part of parliamentary procedure, there's the formality of Tyler has a question, he's going to raise his hand, presiding officer calls on Tyler, Tyler's going to go, will the speaker yield to a question, at which point you go yes, then he stands up and asks his question in front of us. If it is your speech, authorship speech, he wants to ask you a question, will the speaker yield to a question? You have to say yes. You have to accept the question. If it is a pro or a con speech, Mike cons your bill. Mike knows that you are going to ask him an evil question. Will the speaker yield to a question? On a pro and con speech, he could say no. So you have to answer if it's an authorship speech. You can deny a question if it's a pro con speech, but you have to be careful about that denial because if uh, if if Mike denies you a question, when you get the opportunity to deny him a question, then you're probably going to do the same thing. So you want to make sure you kind of use that judiciously so that it doesn't kind of come back to bite you. Uh, could we dress up in our main time? We'll dress up as what? Uh, 
Yeah. You won't put two in Fancy clothes. Like, you did it yeah. the one day. Now, can we actually have name tag stuff? Yeah, we should. We can, like, pull the parents out. Like, right, here's your case. I was saying the United Nations where we each have a headpiece and, like, a flag behind us. <laughs> <laughs> so. Or we could just pull the parents out. Any, anybody intro to wood right now? Or like, advanced wood, you can make, like, the little desk thing name tags? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do we do that in Spanish class. So you can give a pro speech, as we said. You can also um, give a con speech if it switches over to it. That's the order in which we go. You give your speech, you give your pro speech, or a person comes up gives pro speeches. We go up to three. Then you have con speeches. We would go up to three with those. So again, if someone doesn't like a bill, we're not going to be having 17 con speeches taking place. We limit it to three. Um, same thing with pro, we're not going to have 15 people come and give us 15 pro speeches because we would ultimately limit to, to three. Generally, the way then in which it goes, if, if this were to happen during a class period, presiding officer reads the bill to us, then we hear the authorship speech, and then we listen to questions, roughly about three minutes. We have three pro speeches, up to three pro speeches at three minutes a pop, then we have up to three con speeches, three minutes a pop, then we move on. If we have the authorship speech, Medina gives her speech, then we get two pro speeches. No one else has a pro speech, we'll move on to con speeches. Once the con speeches start, we can't go backwards. So if someone had a pro speech, oh, this would be a good speech I want to ask, or I want to be able to give at this point, you've lost that opportunity because we've already moved on to the con speeches. But we're not going to sit here and go, third pro speech, anybody, anybody, anybody? If we don't have a pro speech, you know, whether we want to or three, we'll just move on to the next thing. That's a very good question. We'll do, not this week, we'll wait until next week. Um, we'll do an election for presiding officer. So we'll have, who's interested in being a presiding officer? You raise your hand, Don raises his hand, Nina raises his hand, whatever. We'll do a, we'll do a vote for it. Um, so we'll know who is the winner. We'll also know who is like the vice presiding officer. When it is your, so let's say you're presiding officer, it's your time to speak. You'll still come up and give your authorship speech, but uh, if Nina were in second place or Josh was in second place, they'll be the presiding officer. So you're earning your points through your speech. If you are a presiding officer, you cannot ask questions and you cannot give pro con speech. So you earn your other 25 points, and I'll give that person a separate rubric just to show that this is how you earn it. So you can still earn the 100 points, but if you're a person who you know you need to ask questions, you're going to get mad or like something, you have to give a pro or a con speech, presiding officer is not going to do the same for you. But you'll still give your speech like anybody else, it's just that you don't get the opportunity to ask questions and, and give pro con speeches for the other groups. But you'll still be able to accumulate those points the rubrics like, you know, um, attendance, you know, keep you being here, um, enforcing the rules of parliamentary procedure, keeping everyone in the money, all, all that kind of stuff. So you can still get the credit, but it's going to be a different way than, than what, how everyone wants to do it. But if you know that you need to give questions, then you don't want to be presiding officer. But not the best, then presiding officer. Oh, that. You don't get, you, you can't get it. No, you can't get it. So your your cap would be a, a hundred points. Once we get going, I bet we get three bills per two days. So the first time, like maybe the first day we only get through one bill, but I bet once we kind of get going over the course of two days, we'll probably cover three bills. And kind of like how we did with eloquence, we'll select the order in which people are going. Um, but we're not going, you're not going to be assigned a specific date. If we get through four bills one day and you're, you know, that fourth person, then you're going to be responsible for going that day. Um, but you'll know the order in which you're going to go so that there shouldn't be a surprise when your time rolls, uh, rolls around. Um, mentioned that there's going to be some formality to it. So a couple of times, you know, a couple of those examples will be speaker yielding to a question. Will the speaker yield to a follow-up question? Um, if you ask a question and you're not quite happy with the answer, you can do a follow-up question. Um, you can only do that once, so you can't keep going over and over and over again. Plus, 
you still only get credit for asking the one question. So if um, Toby asks a question, follow-up question, the most you can get is two points. You're not going to be able to get like a four-point question out of it. Now what could happen is the first question is kind of so-so, but you ask a really good follow-up question, you can still get the two points. Sometimes people will do follow-up questions if you're trying to like kind of maybe trap the speaker a little bit. You know, do you think that something? And they'll go yes or no. Well, what about, and then kind of coming up with a follow-up question, sometimes folks might go like the complex question route. Um, but anytime that you, anything's going to be taking place, we'll have a, a formal parliamentary procedure phrase that you're going to have to use. And I'll give you a, kind of like an outline of all those things. The first day, people kind of get used to it a little bit. It takes a little while. But by the second or the third day, we're, we're pretty good at what it is that we're trying to get done. Any questions? The bill that you are going to give, and actually we'll take a look at this in your packet. The last page in your packet looks like this. Sunday, 8 p.m. is when you're submitting your bill to me. By 8 p.m. Now you can do it beforehand. This is going to be. This is already on Google Classroom, so you can. You're going to submit it through there. You don't have to worry about emailing or handing me in a piece of paper or anything like that. There's four sections that are going to be in your bill. Everyone's going to follow through these four. So the first section, you're going to state your new policy. What is it that you want to be adopted um, into place? What do you want to change? What do you want to enact? What do you want to take away? So. Again, this could be things along the lines of, and, and bills have gone all over the place. You mentioned, did you, we had a bill about road salt come winter time. Certainly, we've had bills about changing of the school day. We've had bills about, um, you know, you should be allowed to leave campus for lunch, or if you have a ninth period study hall, why are we making Josh stay here? Just go home if you want to at that point. You could have um, Pennsylvania laws, changing driver's license, learning permit requirements. Um, you know, things with college tuitions, apps, and all that kind of stuff. We can go on and on and on and on. Pretty much anything as long as it's within the school, the local, the state, or the federal realm, all that stuff is, is up for grabs. But your first sentence or two is going to be, what is your bill? What is your idea? The second one is you, at that point, are going to define any kind of ambiguous terms. And I have an example that we're going to take a look at, but it's you kind of clarifying what you mean. So. Point number two, section number two, is basically going to be a clarification. Section number three, implementation date. Some folks will go immediately. Some people will give um, a specific date that they want. Make sure you pick a future date. Say you put December 1st, 2018 as your implementation date, and based on our schedule, you don't get to give your speech until December the 4th. It sounds pretty silly for you to be going, on December 1st, this is going to happen when December 1st was already three days ago. So pick something into the future. I would go into 2019. Or if you want to go you know, into effect immediately, that would allow for uh, different dates to be used. The last thing that you would use is all laws that are in conflict will be declared null and void. You are going to write this word for word. So you are, you're looking at uh, gun control. You want to eliminate all handguns, all weapons from the public. Someone goes, well, doesn't that go against my Second Amendment rights? You can go, currently, yes. However, once this passes, all laws in conflict will be declared null and void. So it keeps us from getting into those, those that being the reason for something not to pass. There's nothing wrong with getting into debates going into the realm of Second Amendment, First Amendment rights, all that kind of stuff. But a current amendment, a current law, wouldn't keep something from passing. Because all laws in conflict would be replaced all the way. So, you know, um, Jeremy decides that students only need to go to school 160 days a year. PA school code requires 180. That would be declared null and void with the passing of this law. So a sample bill down here, 
and I switched the dates, I think, on yours, so it might look a little bit different than, than what's on here. Um, all individuals 65 years of age or older must be retested in order to maintain a valid driver's license within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So that is my bill. That is section one. Sorry, you can't do this bill. I already took it. Section two, this includes the driving license of all motorized vehicles, including but not limited to cars, boats, commercial vehicles, motorcycles, recreational vehicles. The test to maintain the driver's license will include an objective written exam as well as a road test exam. So that would be my section two. I've defined ambiguous terms. These are the license I'm talking about. This is what I mean by revalidating it. This law will go into effect immediately for all Commonwealth citizens who turn 65 years of age on June 30th, 2018 or later. I changed the dates, I think, in your packet. Residents will have 30 dates after the date of turning 65 years of age to complete the required revalidation process. All residents already of these 65 years or older with a current driver's license have until the end of the year to revalidate, and they must continue to revalidate their license over a five-year period. So my implementation date or uh, sentence section ends up being pretty lengthy because I'm trying to include all this stuff so that if folks had questions, it would be answered. And then the last part, I just copy word for word. All laws that are in conflict will be declared null and void, and then you include your name at the end. So by Sunday, you're going to submit that to me through Google Classroom. I take that list, I compile them, and then we look over the bills on, on, on uh, will be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For Friday of this week, keep in mind you're doing five potential bills, so that if I get a bill submission, Jeremy sends something, and I have to send him a note, I got your bill, I like it, sorry, Corey already took it, he has four other bills that he's going to be able to fall back on and take a look at that he's already kind of planned for. Uh, and we'll take a look at this within Google Classroom tomorrow as you uh, grab your laptops. When you are doing your research planner, you don't have to go into that amount of detail. You only have to do section one, two, three, and four for the one bill that you're going to submit. For these, you're just giving a brief description. They don't have to be nearly as detailed, but I'll certainly remind you of that tomorrow. Tomorrow's laptop will be back here. If you have a laptop, we'll go over a couple things, but you're basically going to start looking for the Yeah. You need a pass. 